Hello, Happiness the Bounder, and welcome back. Today we are wrapping up our theme week all about progress over perfection. And while I have said that we should really look at coulds versus shoulds, I've spoken about taking action and using phrases like good enough for government work or fun is done. I've talked about creating balance and not, it's not in extremes. And then yesterday we spoke about honoring our journey. Today, I think I need to wrap up with the most simple and the most caring thing of all about progress over perfection. Because I think as perfectionists, and I do claim myself as one of those, when we get trapped in the cycle of perfectionism, we lose so much love, grace, and time in our lives. We stop seeing ourselves for our true glory and we start spending our time and energy on something that's unobtainable, which in turn results for seeds of unhappiness, which is the whole reason that this is a theme here on the podcast, because we are all capable of happiness abound, but we all also need to be capable of recognizing what's holding us back from having that happiness. And in this case, I see perfectionism as something that holds us back because it doesn't allow you to have any grace to learn, to grow, to make mistakes. Instead, perfectionism demands perfection, which demands that you need to somehow know everything right off the, right off the rip. Somehow you are supposed to create the most perfect immaculate masterpiece without any planning or real preparation or strategy makes me think of like great composers. Those are the kind of people, and I'm going to say like Mozart, Beethoven, Bach, they played for years before they created their great masterpiece. But if they'd sat down at the piano and said, this just needs to be perfect and didn't give their, themselves grace when they put a wrong note in or they didn't play it perfectly or they wrote it imperfectly, then we would never have some of the great classical masterpieces of the world. Now, I'm not an expert on that kind of stuff, but I am telling you that everything that you see that is great and is perfect doesn't really come out that way at first. It takes grace and patience and constant reiteration, which another word for reiteration is growth and progress. It takes those things to truly move forward and to create something that is beautiful and nearly perfect. Second component of this is time. When I think back to creating this podcast and how much time I wasted by wanting it to be perfect right out of the gate, I wasted nearly two years. But, <coughs> excuse me, but that's two years I could have been making progress towards my goal. I could have been striving for progression over perfection, but instead I chose perfection and made no steps forward. So I lost time. And what really makes me think of that is because this is episode 460. I am 40 episodes away from 500 episodes. And that's so amazing to me, but I also think huh, where would I be if I had started when I first had this thought instead of demanding perfection? You know, I'm not beating myself up for it. I learned so much in the process and it helps me talk about perfection in a real life applicable way. But I lost a lot of time striving for perfection when I could have gained so much and utilized the time so well if I just strove for progression. The last one here that I think is a big component that we lose during our, our, our journey to perfectionism is love. And I don't know about you, but for me, type A, I can be pretty aggressive at times. As hard as that is to imagine as I'm speaking very calmly right now, I'm sure, but I can be pretty aggressive at times. and. When I start getting in this mindset that things have to be perfect and that I have to be perfect, and if it's not perfect, I'm going to be judged and I'm judging myself, I become not a very nice person. 
And then that person that comes out drives away love because if I'm demanding perfection and judging myself so harshly, harshly, the other people around me are like, geez, what does she expect from me? She can't love herself. She certainly can't love me. So our relationships start to fail. It's the same thing like saying, oh, you know, this will never be good enough and then thinking that it has to do with you personally. So then you're telling yourself that you're never going to be good enough. And then when people who love you say, you are so good, you're so amazing, you're so powerful, you are more than good enough, you are deserving. We don't recognize that and we're like, yeah, sure, but I'm not perfect. And therefore I'm broken or I'm wrong. And that's just simply not the case, but it drives away love from other people. But it also drives away love from yourself because you're in a space of judgment. You're in a space of criticism and anger and pain and perfectionism. So the three biggest things that we lose are time and love. And then also there's, there's grace, right? We have to have grace in the journey for the progression versus the demanding of perfection. And without that grace, all the other things are what come into play, right? The, the loss of time, the loss of love. But if you can look at it with a lens of grace, or whatever words you want to use here, right? It doesn't have to be grace. It can be patience. It can be kindness. It can be generosity, right? Be generous with your time in diving into progression over perfection. Perfectionism is a form of being stingy in my mind. You're keeping your message or you're keeping yourself from this great thing because you're demanding it to be perfect and therefore you're being stingy with your time, your love, your grace, your talents. Just get out there and do it. Aim for progress over perfection. So I'm going to leave you with that today. I really want you to think about and dive into, have I been giving myself grace? How can I utilize the time? And how has perfectionism kept me from love in my life? If you can figure out those things and turn the table that you do have grace, you do have time, you do have love, the way to do that is to essentially shun perfectionism and really accept progress, moving forward with a humility and a willingness to learn and to grow, a hard work ethic and attention to detail but don't beat yourself up about it if it's not perfect. So that said, I hope that you have a wonderful day. I hope that this theme week on progress over perfection has resonated with you. And if it has, I would love to hear from you. One of the easiest ways to, for me to hear from you, as well as for others to see that the podcast can make a difference in their lives, just as it has yours, is to leave a review on iTunes. And if you can't listen on iTunes or Apple podcasts, then go to facebook.com slash happiness abound blog and you can leave a review there as well. Like I said, these reviews help everyone that is looking for happiness in their lives. If they search for a happiness podcast, it will help them find this episode, this show much faster, much easier, and they can join our community of happiness abounders. So that said, I'm going to leave you with that today. I hope you have the wonderful day that you strive for progress over perfection and above everything else you remember that you are capable of happiness abound.